Suppose this is, you're not sitting in chairs, you're all at workbenches with Bunsen burners and uh, flasks, and you're doing things and setting things on fire and doing a nuclear experiment there. And one wall of this room is a mirror, okay? So everything you're doing is reflected in the mirror. Now, here's the question. I come with a video camera. Somebody here has a video camera. Anyway, whatever, oh yeah, there's a video camera. And from outside, he videotapes and then shows this videotape to an impartial audience and says, is this the real world or the mirror world? Well, the first round you look for Alice. Is Alice around? Because she knows she's at home in both worlds. But if Alice isn't around, the question I ask the audience now is, could you tell from a videotape whether he's photographing the real scientists doing their experiments or the mirror scientists? Any opinions? Could you tell the difference? For example, I noticed that my shirt has buttons on the right side. Right? And that's the way, and I think women's shirts will go the other way. Well, okay, I could look at the mirror scientist and say, ha ha, his buttons are on the right side. It's the real world. Or the guy in the mirror has his buttons on the left side. But I could fool you, I could always sew the buttons on the other side. I wouldn't change any laws of physics and you'd be fooled. Uh, there are a lot of other examples that would perhaps fool you. And maybe the most important one, let me get to it now, is I'm going to, uh, I have a block of wood and I have a screw, a wood screw, and I have a screwdriver, and I'm going to drive the wood screw into the block of wood. Now, what do I do? I take the screw from the box of screws, and I hammer it a little bit, and then I rotate clockwise, clockwise, you know, this way, and the screw goes into the wood. That gives you a hand, a handedness, because it says I'm rotating clockwise and the screw advances. Let's define that as a right-handed screw. And sure enough, I look at the box of screws and it says right-handed 832 wood screws or something like that. Okay. What happens in the mirror? Think of the mirror. I'm rotating clockwise. The mirror guy is rotating clockwise, stupid. Does he see what I'm doing? I'm rotating clockwise, he's rotating counterclockwise. It's no different than I raise my right hand and the guy in the mirror raises his left hand. Sort of, right? Think about it. You know, I raise my right hand, he raises my So mirror changes handedness, if you can define handedness. And here we define it clockwise, advance. This guy is counterclockwise and it's advancing. He's got a left-handed screw in the mirror. Well, suppose left-handed screws were absolutely impossible. Actually, in the shop, on the second shelf, there's a box of left-handed screws. Where'd that get there? Well, some left-handed screws for some carpentry work, and so they ordered a <coughs> box of left-handed screws. If we can make a right-handed screw, we can make a left-handed screw. So left-handed screws are not impossible. But suppose, by some crazy reason, in some planet in some distant solar system, left-handed screws were impossible to make. Every time you try to make it, it would blow up or something. <laughs> then you would say, aha, there's no mirror symmetry. Because I can tell I have a right-handed screw and there's no left-handed screw, even though it looks like that in the mirror, so there's a violation of symmetry. So we can tell a violation of mirror symmetry by just the notion of the handedness. That, and so how does that come down to physics. Now we're getting close. Okay. Oh, well, let me just quickly go to some of these other symmetries and then go to my story. Uh, there's a symmetry which was discovered by Paul Dirac in 1927 when he was calculating to make an equation to describe the electron. He wanted the best possible equation, put in full <laughs> of Einstein stuff, polished all the mathematics, and then he had to take the square root and out of the square root came a plus and a minus charge for the electrons. There were two electrons, one with plus charge. We don't know a plus charge electron. That's crazy. And he worried about it, worried about it. We knew about plus charged protons, but a proton is very heavy. An electron is light, different particles. Eventually, he had to shrug his shoulders and say there must be 
if my equations are correct and I believe in my equations, they're just beautiful, they have to be right, there must be a positive electron. And sure enough, a few years later, they discovered the existence of a positive electron, which we call a positron. And nowadays, you have hot and cold running positrons, you use positrons for medical research, all kinds of things with positive electrons. He discovered a symmetry that for every particle, which he called uh, the, 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 has a twin, called, which we call a, the, a mirror twin, a mirror image, or not, it didn't mean a mirror. It meant it had, it had a, an opposite charge. And we knew about the proton, and so there was a bet, $500 bets of physicists, friends of mine, that no one would ever find a negative proton. And sure enough, at Berkeley, they built an accelerator, and in 1950-something, they discovered the positive, the negative proton. So there's a symmetry. Every particle has an antiparticle twin, which has the same, very similar properties, except the sign of the electric charge. Now, a neutron, for example, doesn't have a, any electric charge, but it does have a little magnet in it. And with the North Pole here and the South Pole there, and the, its twin, its antiparticle, anti-neutron, actually has the magnetic field the other way. So that's a symmetry. It doesn't have anything to do with space. It has to do with electric charge. So we're getting into interesting things. <laughs> T is an interesting thing because uh, it says that, um, again, if, if these were correct symmetries, what it says is that, that uh, the mirror world that we talked about would have the same laws of physics. We didn't say what the result of our experiment is, but if you are doing the experiments and your mirror image is doing experiments and you write down the laws of physics, there'll be a difference in, in the if I measure the distance from the mirror to you, to you as z in the equations, the reflection will be minus z into the mirror. And if I check in my mathematics, it may be complicated differential equations, whatever it is, but if wherever I see z, I put a minus z, do I get the laws of physics change? Well, not if z always appears as z squared. Then you put in minus z and it's still the same equations. And so there was a belief uh, believed by all sensible scientists, even biologists and chemists, and probably even lawyers, <laughs> that the laws of physics in the mirror must be the same as the laws of physics in the real world. Without Alice's testimony. Incidentally, the guy who wrote Alice in Wonderland was a mathematician. Uh, okay, uh, so that's, that's the, uh, the mirror symmetry. And again, the question is, is there a planet somewhere, way out there somewhere in some distant uh, galaxy in which all the matter is opposite? Negative protons, positive electrons, all that stuff. Well, if there was, then the belief in symmetry says they'd have the same laws of physics. The big problem would come when they visit us in their spaceship, which will be then made of anti-steel. <laughs> and we'd have to thought to worry if they landed because we know that matter and antimatter annihilate and give rise to energy, and poof, with big explosions. We can see that when we make antiprotons in our lab. Here we make hot and cold burning antiprotons in Fermilab. We've stored antiprotons in our storage, magnetic storage bottle for weeks because in the vacuum, nothing happens. But if they touch anything, they will react strongly. But the laws of physics seem to, uh, we thought, were the same. And then there's a question of the direction of time. Now, anybody looking at me will say, come on, time only goes in one direction, unfortunately. Uh, but that's not true in simple systems. Now, I'm a complicated system. But if I take particles and I do a reaction, particle A comes in, hits particle B, and C and D come off from the reaction. Then I say, let's reverse the time. Well. I reverse the experiment, and I get exactly what I started with in the first experiment. So there was a belief that the direction of time doesn't appear in the equations. Again, it's wherever you replace, you see a time, you say put in minus t. It doesn't change because t always comes in quadratically or, or in such a way that the negative sign never appears in variance. 